we're no longer slaves to sin, which that was the only inclination to do before. But now through Christ, we have the benefit of, of realizing who Christ is within us, what the Holy Spirit has done to our bodies by calling us the temple of, of, of the Holy Spirit. And now we have the ability to honor God mm -hmm. with our decisions, our choices, our lives, our yep. worship, and everything. Yep. Whereas before, we didn't have that mm -hmm. because we would never want to do that in the first place. Yeah. We're talking about the importance of faith, mm -hmm. knowing our faith, what we know about our faith and and most importantly why we stand for what we know yeah. especially in in today's culture where yep. it's it's a little hard to mm -hmm. even have faith or the faith that we have especially yeah. in the christian world uh so so we need to know why that's important mm. and every christian especially if they come to our church uh why is it important to be people of faith and to stand for something yeah what do you think yeah, I, you know, you're mentioning culture, and we live in a very shifting culture. We live in a trendy culture, mm -hmm. and and as you know, trends come and go. Whether it be fashion, um, even technology, mm -hmm. and sadly, ideologies. We we live in a in a in a time now where where I think people grab an ideology, and five six years from now, you know, a new ideology comes in, and and especially, you know, I almost want to say young people, but. I feel like adults have been sucked into this as well, yeah. where everyone just wants to be in the in. Everyone mm -hmm. wants to be in the new. Everyone wants to be in, in, in the trendy. And I think part of the reason why the Christian faith, you know, when you hold to it, um, is actually so countercultural because it has nothing to do mm -hmm. with what's in or what's new or what's trendy. But, but Paul and even Jesus himself the constant reminder is to hold on to the truths that have been once and for all delivered to the saints. And so that's actually our call as believers. It's not to look for the new or the trendy. And again, you know, we're aware of this. This even happens in theology where, where depending on how society goes and now, you know, you're, you're starting to hear of, uh, you know, things like, you know, and I know we won't touch on this today, but like, you know, women pastors and where does that come from? Uh, or the charismatic movement and why is this new field and visions and dreams and, and prophecy and all this stuff? Like, where does this desire come from? And obviously all those social justice mm -hmm. issues that, that our culture deals with today. And now, you know, parables are are now preached to match the, the, the trend. Um but the scriptures are clear, and it, and it is. It, it's mm -hmm. we're called to hold to what what the original message that was delivered to us. It's what we're called to hold to, and so I think that yeah, part of it is just it's countercultural, yeah. yeah. And it's it's been tested, it's survived at least you know the the two thousand years that since Christ we've we've had the mm -hmm. same message, and then prior to that we've had the the Old Testament that goes back even other, yeah. another thousands of years. Uh, so we we have a message given to us by God that has tested the uh, the you know the test of time yeah. and has survived. And so, as Christians, I think one of our main objectives would be understanding faith, knowing what we do stand for mm. in certain aspects of of our doctrine, and then standing firm on that. Yeah. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about today was. For instance, we'll talk about two. There's so much yeah. more, but you know we only have like 15 minutes. God and the person and work of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna have a. It's gonna be distinguished between both, but we know that they're all part of the Godhead. It's yeah. one God. Um, but but it's important for people to understand what you believe about God. Right. Who is God? Yes. What is God? Uh, it's theology 101. You know, mm -hmm. when we come to God, we 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 know. And and one of the things that may be uh, overplayed and can seem overplayed is this concept of the sovereignty of God. Mm. And what, how would you explain the sovereignty of God? Yeah, I, I mean, some of these attributes get tied into God's sovereignty, but, sovereignty, but, but overall, because he's the creator, mm -hmm. because he's the one that created everything, he rules over everything. Everything that happens 
on this earth is under God's watch. It, it's not. There's nothing that can surprise them. We're not open theists, which is a, mm-hmm. a, a modern view of, of God on this topic. It, you know, things like uh, the omniscience of God tie into his sovereign, sovereignty, his omnipotence ties into his mm-hmm. sovereignty. But, but as a basic definition, it's God is the ruler and he is in control of everything that happens in this world and in, in the universe mm-hmm. um he, that that's who he is he's sovereign over all things and yeah. that includes me yeah and that, includes, and that includes human beings that's right us yes. my family yep uh my kids yes god is in control of all that aspects of salvation and you know amongst other things that we could and, get into uh, as well does god change no he's immutable right okay what does yes. that mean Immut- yeah so the basic definition is god does not change so Again, we get into essence, to character, uh, character. Sorry, the things that God says. None of those things are ever changing. Mm-hmm. So yeah. nothing I could do could change right. God's plan for my life. Could change God's actions in somebody else's right. life. So I can't pray against somebody. Right. I can't pray for my team to win the, right. the football game, yeah. the Super Bowl right. coming up. None of that. I mean, you could do it, but at the end of the day, it's not going to change <laughs> yeah. what God has already determined. And that. Yes. And that provides a sense of comfort the the believer knows that god is sovereign in control and nothing anyone could do could ever change his plans or purposes Uh, part of the his attributes in this would be understanding yeah the like what you mentioned but also knowing that god is good Mm -hmm. his goodness and that needs to be understood by every christian Mm -hmm. because christians suffer Yes. Christians go through a lot of pain. Christians uh, are normal people. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not exempt from pain. We're not exempt from cr- tears, crying. Uh, I think, you know, we experience the same amount of pain. And uh, but how do we call God good? Mm-hmm. And, and how do we say God is good in spite of all of that stuff? Yeah. So one of the, the, the core doctrines that we have to know about God is knowing that he is good. Yeah. So he is sovereign in control of all things, yeah. which plays out to, to, to us that everything that he does mm-hmm. then is translated to us in his goodness, is yeah. given to us in his goodness where, where what we call good isn't what God calls good. And we don't define what goodness is. Goodness is defined by the person of God. Yeah. He's the one that defines goodness for us. And so how do you say to somebody that has just lost somebody to, I don't know, cancer, COVID, uh, all of these, e- even their children that yeah. are maybe came out, uh, some disease from birth, maybe they lost a child. Uh, how do you appeal to a good God and a sovereign God in the midst of something chaotic like that. Yeah. And I, I think that that's where, you know, from a human perspective, a lot of these things um, become difficult in that sense that you're, you're um, because your, your human emotions play, play into this. And the immediate question is, yeah, where, where was God in all this? Or why would God even allow for such a thing to happen? And so I was, as you were talking, I, you know, you reminded me of First Peter, chapter four, um, because there's an, a, a portion here where, you know, Peter's talking to the church and he's actually speaking about suffering. And so, one of the things that he says in verse twelve is, "Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you." And and I think that. What we need to realize is that in this human fallen world, so, so you know, combining these two ideas of God's goodness and suffering, well, suffering only exists because sin exists. Mm-hmm. And that's what we need to understand. You know, from a biblical perspective, if we read Genesis chapter 1 and 2 prior to the fall, there's no suffering. There's no, there's no death. Mm-hmm. You know, you see it even in, in Adam's ability to... to to mingle and intertwine mm-hmm. with even creation itself mm-hmm. as far as animals go. There's no work in the sense of, you know, the garden had everything provided for Adam, um, even though he has instructions on, on things to, to do, but yeah. right, to cultivate and all that, but but it's there for him. Um and 
And so prior to the fall, there is no such thing as suffering. And so that's where God goodness begins, is that when we understand that when God created the world, he created it suffering free. And it's not until Satan comes and deceives and the fall occurs. And that's why the first curse isn't to, to, to humanity. It's actually the earth itself gets mm-hmm. cursed in Genesis chapter 3, verses 14. Um, it, it's the earth itself that, that first gets cursed. And then obviously, you know, the, the curses to, to, to everyone else. But, but to, to emphasize that in our human world, suffering is expected because sin exists Mm -hmm. and so god's goodness then is revealed in that he's the remedy Mm -hmm. for sin uh and and so i i think that for us when we're going through these fiery trials in in this life those fiery trials are to be expected the thing is that we don't know the 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 level of Mm -hmm. of of these things you know that and that's i think what what shocks us as humans. So you mentioned cancer. Yeah, the reality is, is no one wakes up expecting to get that phone call from the doctor that, hey, you've got cancer. It's just not a reality in our lives. But I think what helps me is to know that in the midst of the things that I do not know, there is someone that does Does know, know. and it's God. And so in the midst of the pain that I may go through as a human, it helps me to pray to know that in my weakest moment, we have a strong God mm-hmm. who can hold us and sustain us and, 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 and keep us, in a sense, in his hand. And I think that that's, that's how I would balance you know, those, two, mm-hmm. those two concepts. So in the midst of suffering, we have a strong rock, yes. a strong tower Fortress, yeah. that doesn't move and doesn't change. Yeah. Uh, now that you mentioned uh, sin and the world god's remedy then uh, comes by way of that what you yeah. referenced genesis chapter 3 and now yeah. the, the following verse on 15 the child that's that's gonna strike the head yes. of the serpent uh, strike the head of satan um who in the new testament is yeah. is, is jesus, jesus christ, christ. Yeah. and and so the person and work then of jesus what, what we're to believe about him is first of all uh his his mission on this world mm-hmm to save humanity from sin yes which is the original cause of humanity separation from god Mm -hmm. so it's a great reminder for us to to understand christ in that in Mm -hmm. that regard it's like sometimes we overemphasize oh jesus loves me loves me loves me it's all like lovey-dovey with with christ but his mission Mm -hmm. is obedience to god to provide this sense of connection reconciliation what paul says yeah be reconciled uh, to God because he he resolves sin. Yes. He takes away sin's power. Yeah, and, and you're right. I mean, what we know about Christ matters. And, and you know, in our society, again, this is a pet peeve of mine, when, when people, I think with good intentions, they try to make God seem kinder. Mm-hmm. Um, but in doing so, they... They mess, you know, they, they mess core doctrines of, of the faith. So, so in trying to make God seem kinder, that there are theologians and, and, and scholars who, who deny things like the substitutionary atonement. You know, how can God kill his son to save sinners? But that very doctrine beautifies God. It expresses ultimate love mm-hmm. and so again in trying to make god seem kinder yeah. and nicer we actually make we, we take less of of yeah. of of god's kindness and beauty and and, and again god doesn't need our help just mm-hmm. let the text speak for itself so that that's why it's a pet peeve of mine but but in our world you know the reality is is that mormons believe in jesus mm-hmm. jehovah witnesses believe in jesus muslims believe in jesus and then catholics, you, yeah, catholics and then you got people like oprah <laughs> <laughs> they believe in yeah. Jesus and and even in Wait, God. Don't talk about don't talk bad about Oprah. <laughs> well, <right>? <laughs> <laughs> she'll give you a car, but yeah. she'll get Jesus wrong. Yeah, so, yeah. so so that's the and that's the problem is that like like you mentioned, you know, Jesus loves me. The, the famous shirt for us in the nineties, Jesus is your homeboy yeah, with yeah, the cartoon yeah, figure yeah. and all that. There's a lot of Jesus going around in our world, but the issue is is that it's a lot of wrong Jesus yeah. and. And as Christians, we do need to know the work of, 
of of Christ on the cross, not just for personal salvation and, and our understanding of grace and how that mm-hmm. even Im- impulses us and motivates us to give proper mm-hmm. worship, but ultimately because you have all these depictions of Jesus. There are people that say, you know, yeah, Jesus is Jesus, but he, but he could easily be a woman. Mm-hmm. I just, someone sent me a clip of a, of a pastor, uh, you preached on this actually on uh, oh, whoa, on the whoa. on the washing of feet. Oh, okay. so 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 someone <laughs> sent me a clip of uh, of someone talking about Jesus washing washing feet, not in the way you did it, but <laughs> but saying, oh, when Jesus did that, he transgendered himself. Wow. Because because women would be oftentimes it was slave women who yeah. would wash feet, and, and wow. so again here you have culture, <laughs> and, and and a classic example of of using culture to interpret a text. Mm-hmm. And because we live in these days, so you hear you have someone, and, and again, they're saying it with such, you mentioned in the beginning, conviction. Mm-hmm. They're teaching this text as if throughout church history, this is how the text has always, mm-hmm. you know, the text has always been interpreted. And I'm watching this, 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 this clip and in holy wrath, you know, I can't even get through it. Cause I'm like, this is wow, so yeah. ridiculous. It's, it's blasphemous. It's, it's, blasphemous. blasphemous. Yeah. It, it's a wrong Christ. But that's why we need to know not just, yeah, that Jesus loves me, and, and that's important, but what the Bible actually says about Christ, because there's just so many false views mm-hmm. out there on Jesus. And again, here in, in, in my example is someone teaching a text of scripture, mm-hmm. but completely getting the text yeah. wrong. <laughs> yeah. Inventing something Inventing completely that, yeah. new. And uh, so as Christians... Christ then stands as our substitute. Yes. Christ stands as our substitute and takes away our sin. And what's, what, what Paul emphasizes is that he gives us his perfect life yeah. and, and we give him our messed up life. And, perfect. And, yeah. and, and so God then accepts us because he sees Jesus in us. It's Jesus that has been given to us to... Uh, imputes himself to us and declares us righteous yeah. so that we can stand before the father so so christ is is beautiful in all his glory christ is amazing christ christ loved to surrender himself to god to surrender himself to people like mm-hmm. us you know that's the thing that we got to really yeah uh remember like there was no reason for god mm-hmm. or christ to love a sinful world there was yeah. no reason for that but he did so and he did it out of obedience and and sin, therefore, then is not abolished, but the control of sin in the sinner mm-hmm. is finally taken away. So yeah. you mentioned the garden. In the garden, prior to Genesis 3, the Adam and Eve didn't ha- had the ability to sin and had the ability not to sin, right. which they did sin, yeah. but they had both. Yes. Then from after the fall until until Christ, everyone is basically born with yes, sin. So right. the only thing they can do is mm-hmm. sin. And that, you know, that's a the core in, doctrine. Yeah. The inclination of the humanity in general is to, is be to sin. Yeah, yeah. It's sin. It's our total depravity, if you want to call yep. it like that. Uh, and then what Christ then does on the cross by his grace is he takes away sin's power. It, it no longer has a sting, as Paul says, quoting Hosea. It doesn't have a stinger anymore, and therefore the the Christian now goes back to that state mm-hmm. of the the Edenic world of of now having the opportunity to honor God and to sin. Mm-hmm. We're no longer slaves to sin, which that was the only inclination to do before. But now through Christ, we have the benefit of of realizing who Christ is within us, what the Holy Spirit has done to our bodies by calling us the temple of, of, of the Holy Spirit. And now we have the ability to honor God mm-hmm. with our decisions, our choices, our lives, our worship yep. and everything. Yep. Whereas before we didn't have that mm-hmm. because we would never want to do that in the first place. Yeah, we that's were, right. The Bible calls us enemies of God. Of God. Yep. Under the wrath of God. And yeah, you're right. And that's why for, for us, we have to be born again as believers and we're only able to do that through Jesus Christ. Through Christ. Yep.